Hi, we're going to be talking about ectopic pregnancy. This is a diagnosis that affects around 1% of all pregnancies and it's potentially life-threatening. There's uh, up to 2% mortality associated with it, so it's considered a real gynecological emergency. Basically, an ectopic pregnancy is any pregnancy that happens outside of the uterus. Usually these are going to be tubal pregnancies in the ampulla, isthmus, or cornea. It can also happen in the cervix, and it can also happen in the ab abdominal cavity. The, the real danger of this, of course, is uh, a rupture of a tube uh, into the peritoneal cavity, and uh, it can cause severe bleeding, hemorrhage, sepsis, death. There are some cases of uh, ectopic pregnancies that have gone on to uh, deliver a, a healthy baby, but it's it's very rare, and and uh, in normal circumstances that will never uh, be allowed to to even take place. So. Most of these girls or women are going to present with abdominal pain. That is the uh, the the major presenting symptom. Uh, most of them will have uh, amenorrhea, and at least six to eight weeks of amenorrhea, and uh, about half of them will have uh, vaginal bleeding. And then they're also going to present with some of the normal discomforts that come along with pre pregnancy. Uh, they'll have tender breasts, uh, frequent urination, and nausea. So the physical exam is, is important in diagnosis. You want to uh, palpate the adnexa and cervical areas, and uh, cervical motion tenderness will be, will be most likely noted. Mild uterine enlargement on bimanual exam, a low-grade fever, orthostatic changes, and then the labs and the imaging we'll talk a little bit about in diagnosis. So the differential uh, most common is the threatened abor abortion, a heterotopic pregnancy, appendicitis, UTI, pelvic inflammatory disease, kidney stones, diverticulitis, ovarian tumor or cyst, uh, endometriosis, and myomyoma. So on this list, uh, we have a couple uh, that are potentially life-threatening. Appendicitis could be, diverticulitis possibly could be. And diverticulitis is going to be mostly in a different uh, different age group. So uh, that's not going to be a, a big overlap. But uh, there's just a couple of things on this list, including uh, including ectopic pregnancy, that are uh, important to make sure that you rule out. Uh, so we make sure to avoid any mortality. So the way we diagnose this is uh, beta-HCG test is important. So this sh shows up after eight days of pregnancy earlier than, than you're going to have any symptoms from an ectopic pregnancy, most likely. And beta H C D G doubles every two days. Uh, a transvaginal ultrasound is going to be very important in the diagnosis. So you can use this as a uh, diagnostic alone if uh, if you can see a yolk sac, an embryo, or an embryonic heartbeat. So if you catch those things uh, outside of the uh, uterus, then you know you've got a uh, ectopic pregnancy. Now, in other cases, you might just have a uh, elevated beta HCG uh, with some of the symptoms that we mentioned before, like abdominal pain. But uh, but you can't find any fetus or any embryo in the uterine cavity. So in that case, uh, the beta HCG um, plus symptoms uh, without, uh, with a negative ultrasound basically can be diagnostic as well. 
Uh, progesterone levels are checked, but uh, I don't believe they're necessarily diagnostic. And uh, in some cases, the diagnosis will be made on curatage. Uh, Doppler and laparoscopy can also be uh, diagnostic. So these are going to be cases, laparoscopy, that's going to be a case where you just can't figure out what's going on, and so you have to go in and, and do an expo exploratory laparoscopy, and then you find uh, the ectopic pregnancy. So this can be treated medically. Uh, methotrexate is, uh, of course, a, a drug um, used to stop basically anything from growing, um, but it's but it's used for uh, abortion in some cases, and it can be used for ectopic pregnancy. You don't want to use it if a uh, patient is hemodynamically unstable, if there's any type of impending rep rupture, because you're not going to have time uh, for, for this to be effective before you have a rupture. You don't use it in immunodeficiency because it's going to uh, decrease your uh, white count, your immune system. You don't use it if people are allergic to it, obviously. Uh, in heterotopic pregnancies, you don't use it. Breastfeeding, you don't use it. It has some pretty serious side effects, um, including uh, immunosuppression, but, but a, a lot of others, GI problems especially. Uh, mifoprostone can also be used, and uh, in some cases uh, they'll, you'll kind of wait it out, but that's going to be the, the rare case. So surgically, many of these are going to be handled by a salping oscopy ostomy. So, um, so what they do is go in and make an incision in the uh, the tube or, or wherever we we find the ectopic pregnancy, and then they sew it back up. But there, the scarring that's associated with that may uh, cause an increased risk of future ectopic pregnancy. So in other cases, they're just gonna just gonna cut. Uh, and remove that area of the uh, fallopian tubes. So uh, in those cases, obviously you'll have uh, one less route for uh, sperm to travel f to fertilize an egg and one less route for an egg to come down. And so you ha could have a decrease in fertility but it's indicated for uncontrolled bleeding and severely damaged tubes recurrent ectopic pregnancy, large ectopic pregnancy, and uh, when permanent contraception is desired. So some of the images that I used here when it were taken from uh, Wikimedia Commons, they're in the public domain. And if you have any uh, suggestions, please email me at kendrick at themedschool.com or leave a comment below. I want to make sure that these are valuable for those who watch it, uh, especially medical students in their third and fourth years. As an overview of uh, of uh, ectopic pregnancy or whatever sub subject we're handling, so please give me uh, feedback on what important things I might have left out, or what uh, incorrect information I might have given. Thank you.